Hey, you guys, we have two arithmetic sequences here, and we're going to find the recursive and explicit formula for each, okay? First of all, I want you to just make sure you're in the right place. As you're working on these, you're going to hear these terms, arithmetic recursive, arithmetic explicit, geometric recursive, and geometric explicit. This video, we are focusing on the top two. If you're finding yourself needing a different video, I'll link a playlist, and I probably have one for you, okay? All right. So these are sequences. What makes them sequences and not just a random list of numbers? Good question. They are related to each other in some way, okay? So if I go ahead and look at this sequence, what do you notice? Well, we notice that we are adding seven each time, okay? Add seven, add seven. And this dot, dot, dot signifies that this sequence keeps going, okay? You just keep adding seven. Now, the purpose of these formulas, recursive and explicit, is to help us find more numbers in this sequence, okay? Give us a formula for that. So we need to go over just a little bit of terminology, and then it falls together pretty quickly. So when you're working with these, you're going to see a lot of A's and a lot of N's. The N refers to the place it is in line, basically the place in the sequence. So n equals one is the first number in the sequence. n equals three is the third number in the sequence and on it goes, right? When you see a with a little number like this, a little subscript, a sub one, that's talking about the value of that number, okay? So a sub one in this case is negative four. You're also gonna see a sub n quite frequently. What that is saying is plug in whatever number you want for n, to find that in the sequence. So if I had a sub 100, I'm looking for the 100th term, okay? As we write our formulas, we're going to leave a lot of things as a sub n so people can plug in what they want. Okay, so now that we know that, we can go ahead and apply it, okay? We'll, we'll talk about the difference between these as we go, okay? So my recursive formula, basically, if we were in an English class, right, some of you are probably English people. If I was looking for the next term here, the a sub 5, what would I do? Well, I would just add 7 again, right? Add 7, and I it would end up with 29. So if I were in an English class, I could just write in my beautiful handwriting, to find the next term in your sequence, take the one before and add seven, right? I could just write that out. Your English teacher would be like A plus, thank you. You're done. But this is math and we want to write it in math terms, right? We don't use all those words usually in math. We want to use a formula to represent that. So this is where our A sub N and stuff comes in. So if I were to write in math language what I just did to find this A sub five, I would say to find a sub five, all I did was take a sub four, right? The one before it, this is a sub four, and I added seven, right? Isn't that a math, mathy way to write that? Yeah. But we want people to be able to plug in whatever they want, not just five. So how do I show that in math language? This is where our a sub n comes in. So I'm going to say a sub n, which just means whatever place you want to find. You plug in what you want for n, okay? Whatever you want to find, take the one before it. But how do I write that in math language? Well, I write it as a sub n minus 1. That means the one before it. Because isn't 4 5 minus 1? Yeah, so if I want to find the 100th term, I need to know the 99th, right? So that's that a sub n minus 1. And then what do you do to the one before? In this case, we add 7. Oh my gosh, there we go. Isn't it beautiful? Okay, and for this to be helpful for anyone, we need to let them know what the first term is in this sequence. So I would just say a sub 1 is 1. Sorry, that's a little cramped right there. <laughs> so there's my answer. Okay, so you might notice that for the recursive formula, 
just like we just said, you have to know the number before in order to get the next number, right? If I want to know the 500th term in this sequence, I need to know the 499th, right? I need to know that one. I have to know, know the one before that one, right? So the recursive is helpful, but it's not super helpful if I want to know a term way far out, right? So guess what? That's where the explicit formula comes in. So stick around for that guy. We're going to go ahead and do this recursive really fast. So I want you to look at this for a second and see if you notice the pattern. What is happening to these numbers? Well, we are subtracting 12 each time. Okay. Now, I just wanted to point out really quickly that it told us straight up these were arithmetic sequences, but if it hadn't, I would know they were arithmetic because we were adding and subtracting. Okay, that's what makes them arithmetic. If we were multiplying or dividing, that would make them geometric. If you need a video on that, I'll link one in the corner. Okay, so for this guy, I would say whatever term you want to find, a sub n, take the one before it. How do I say that in math language? I say a sub n minus 1. And then what do you do to that one? You subtract 12. Lovely. Okay. And then again, to make this helpful for people, they need to know what the first term is. So we say a sub 1 in this case is 99. Awesome. Look at that. Okay, we are moving on to explicit formulas. Why are they called explicit? I don't know, but we're not going to say bad words. For this guy, remember we talked about for these ones, you have to know the term before, which has its limitations, right? For explicit, guess what, guys? Once we find our explicit formula, you can be like, hey, I want to know the 111th term. And you can just plug it in and you don't have to know the one before it. So how are we going to find that? Okay, listen, <laughs> I'm going to show you a formula, but I don't want you just to memorize it. Okay, we're going to talk about it so you understand why we're plugging in what we're plugging in. Okay, here it is. This is the, this is the magic. So I'm going to explain this as we fill it in. Remember, a sub n means whatever number you want to find right? That is equal to my first term in the sequence. In this one, it is one, my first term. And then we're adding the common difference. That's what D stands for. So basically, how is it changing? Well, we're adding seven. So one plus seven. But that's not all, right? That would give me the second term. But what about the rest? Well, that is where this n minus 1 comes in. You'll notice when I found the fifth term, a sub 5, how many times did I add 7? To get a sub 5, I added 7 four times. One less time than the place I wanted. So if we're looking for the hundredth term in this sequence, we would add 7 99 times. Does that make sense? That is where the n minus 1 comes in. So you're going to add 7 how many times? Well, you're going to add it whatever number you want to find, whatever place, one less time than that. That is my explicit formula. All right. Some teachers might want you just to leave it like that. They're happy with it. Some might want you to get rid of these parentheses. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to distribute this in and have a sub n equals 1 plus 7n minus 7. And then we're going to continue to solve that down and end up with 7n minus 6. There we go. Okay, now you might be like, well, do I need to list the a sub 1 on this one? With explicit formulas, you don't need to. Why? Because it's already built in. Remember, we plugged in our first term. So if someone wanted to find the first term in the sequence, they could just plug in 1 for n and find it. All right. A lot of times with explicit formulas, I like to check to make sure we did it correctly, right? So let's go ahead and check. And let's pretend we didn't know what our fifth term was. We are looking for the number that is in the fifth spot 
n equals 5. So we're going to plug in here. So a sub 5 is equal to 7 times n, 5, minus 6. So that gives me 7 times 5 gives me 35. Minus 6 is happy day, 29. Look at that. So that makes me feel pretty darn confident that I could plug in any number for n and get that number in the sequence. Guys, magic things happening. Okay, let's go ahead and do it one more time here. If you've stuck with me this long, bless you. Here is my formula again. So whatever number we want to find, you take the first number in the sequence, a sub 1. In this example, it is 99. And you, in this case, we're subtracting. So we could write plus a negative, but we're just going to write minus. So we are subtracting 12 how many times? Well, we are subtracting 12, whatever place you want to find, one less than that. Right? Feeling good about that? Okay. Now, some teachers, again, want you to leave it like that. Some want you to simplify it. So we will go ahead and do that. A sub n equals 99 minus 12 n plus 12. And continuing to simplify that, we get negative 12 n plus 111. There we go. All right, I know you want to check it. I could just feel it. We're going to check it. Oh, we haven't figured out the fifth one yet. Let's figure it out manually, I guess you could say. <laughs> so if I wanted to know the next spot, I would subtract 12, which would give me 51. So let's make sure when we plug it in here that we get 51. So I want to know the fifth spot. So n equals 5. So a sub 5 equals negative 12 times n, which is 5 plus 111. Negative 12 times 5 is going to give me negative 60 plus 111. Guess what negative 60 plus 111 is? Ding, ding, ding. 51. Okay, awesome. I'm feeling good about this. I hope you're feeling good about it. I will have that playlist linked if you need some other examples. Thanks.